Hello, it's Sarah and Kiwi. Um, today we're going to do some more inchies. I'm working on these little inchy books. I wanted to show you guys. Where's Maya's? Oh, well, I don't know where it is. Oh, here it is. Maya made this yesterday. Summer fun. And the sun. It's a hot dog hamburger. We're not sure. <laughs> uh sports and the heart I put it upside down and a pool with a turtle floaty so we're just I'm really enjoying these and um, I'm today we're gonna do mixed media and I have one more idea that I'm gonna be doing as well but for for today I'm gonna do two pieces of paper we're gonna do cool colors and warm colors and that way we don't get mud and these will be our backgrounds. I'm debating if I just want to make an inchy book or if I'm going to use this uh, matchbox to keep them in and, and decorate the box um, with mixed media. And I think I'm going to do that. It's just that I don't think these pages are going to be big enough to use to decorate the box. Um, but we're going to make inchies and an inchy book for today then. Well, maybe I could make an inchy box with this. Anywho, we're just going to get started. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is some collage. So I'm using um, Mod Podge, and I have some collage papers here. I'm going to put some Mod Podge out. And you can use matte medium or what else? I mean glue. But I have Mod Podge, and I like it. It works. People like collage page and all that stuff. So I've chosen only black and white papers. And this is actually a, an envelope, the inside of an envelope. And so I'm going to put a piece of this, a couple of pieces of that. Just black and white I'm working with. Because um, I'm going to add color with paint. And you can add color with, uh, and I'm actually, I cut, what I, all I did was cut a piece of um, mixed media paper in half. So now it's six by nine. It was nine by 12. So I have that. I'm going to do some music, music paper. Uh, who knows, right? Let's see. I have dictionary pages. I tried to pick things that had different size fonts and uh, I love collage though for some reason. This is just all fun to me. Um, what else did I grab? Dictionary pages. This is just another. Thank you, Allie. She sent me a bunch of See, this is even, it's like a thicker paper. Oh, look at this. This is another envelope. Um, it's the inside of an envelope. I like that. Uh, I have one more envelope, too. This one. All you need, sorry, all you need is love is stuck in my head today. Um, so I'm going to rip this. This is just like a, um, what is it? Stripes. I like it. Let's do a little more writing. Something a little bigger. I thought I got some kids. Well, we'll use this maybe. Even though this has red on it. It's a little, I wanted a little bit bigger font. This is bigger. I think this might be good because you don't have to fill the whole page. You can just um, leave some space that's not going to be uh, Covered. So let's just start adhering. So I could go off camera and do this. 
What do you think? I know you guys like crafting along with me though. So that's what we'll do. I'll do this page on ca off on camera. And uh, the other one I'll go off camera. And it doesn't have to be in um, vertical and horizontal when, when I'm doing this. This is uh, okay to be, because I'm going to cover it actually with some gesso just to push it back a little bit. And I know people get confused, and I was confused when I first started doing mixed media. I didn't understand, well, you just put all that work in, why are you covering it up? So, um, it's because this, all this stuff does is add interest and um, texture to the piece. And it's fun, because that's what I always say. If it wasn't fun, I wouldn't do it. So, I skip the parts that I don't like. And so you should too. Um, this just to me, I don't know. I like sticking papers down. If you don't like sticking papers down, don't do this part. Because if you just like color, just start when we do the color part. And you'll be fine. There's more music pages. I love this, um, my Podge bottle because I can just squirt it out as I go. It's just convenient and um, handy to use that way. Some of this should show through at the end. Oh, I like these small words. These small words are good. Yeah, I'm not putting um, collage, or I mean Mod Podge, on the back of everything, and that's probably going to bite me if stuff starts to come up because we are going to cut this down into inchy size so you know just FYI do as I say not as I do alright because I'm hasty and patient person make it nice oopsie like maybe I should put a little on that side and then that side We're going to have to let this dry, so I will go away and finish that one, and then this one will probably be dry, and I can um, take you through the next step, which you're going to need a brayer. I'm loving, see I think that's fine. We've got enough going on on there. Do I need anything else? Let's see. Maybe some more music right here. Love is all you need. Sorry, I get stuff stuck in my head. Some music. And music over here. And that's it. It's not looking like much right now. I think I want to put 
these words right here and I'm gonna let that dry all right so I'm gonna go away let this dry and we'll come back and we'll, we're gonna add a little coat of gesso and then some color and we're gonna do warm colors and cool colors so we don't get mud so I'll be right back all right I love them see I mean this to me it's just happy goodness I don't know it's monochromatic but it's so cool and I love it like there's a little piece that didn't stick so I'm just gonna cut it off I could stick it but I'll cut it instead um I wanted to talk about the color wheel real quick because what I've learned after my time of uh, doing mixed media, I've taken a couple classes. You know who Diane Reevely talks about this for sure in her classes and even on her YouTube videos because people make mud like with her sprays. So she talks about the warm and cool colors and all you need to do, oh, I'm just peeling the <laughs> Mod Podge off my fingernails. It's got a color wheel, and this is called the Pocket Color Wheel. I think I got this at Mike. No, probably AC Moore. Um, and they have big ones, little ones, all different ones, but this basically covers it. And let me just show you what it says here. So it shows you your colors, and it talks about here primary colors, secondary colors, tertiary colors, warm colors, and cool colors. And that's what we're going to focus on because these won't make mud. If you do all warm colors and all cool colors, you won't make mud. But when you mix warm and cool, you have a tendency to make mud. Um, color, hue, value, intensity, tint, tone, shade, neutral gray. So it just talks a little bit about what the language of color is, right? And then on the back, it talks about harmonious color schemes, right? So monochromatic, which is this, See how it's monochromatic? It's, it's, I don't know, I like it. And a lot of people love monochromatic. Anal an analogous says using colors that are adjacent to each other on the color wheel. So next to each other, that's like the warms. So I'm going to, for what, my first page, I'm going to do blues, blues and greens. And I picked these. So I have a dark blue, and I'm using pearls, and actually I got one pearl, and these are regular um, craft paints. But if they're next to each other on the color wheel, see, it's pretty much right here, see? You're going to be okay. Um, I don't know why I'm yelling. Uh, wait, we're on the back. Um, so those are analogous, 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 and not analogous. I'll figure it out. Use at least two but no more than five consecutive colors on the wheel. So you could do as many. I could throw some yellow in here. I might want to do that. I'm going to grab some yellow and we'll just see what happens. Um, <clears throat> and then complementary are using any two colors directly opposite each other on the color wheel. So blue and orange. That's complementary. Now we're not going to do that yet until until you're doing your focal point. So what what it's going to end up with for us, since we're doing inches, one is going to be the twinchy side. So we're going to cut these in two by twos, and then this is going to be the inchy side. And that way, the inches will be on top of its complementary colors. All right. And then what else did I want to say? <clears throat> Split complementary triad tetrad and color key um, so that's what all these little triangles mean on here so see this you can have you can go with green and then these are both split complementary the complementary is red red and green that's maybe Christmas colors right um, so that's just so you don't make mud that's what I'm gonna go with today <coughs> the first thing I want to do though <clears throat> is put a little coat of gesso and I use Liquitex Basics acrylic gesso and it's white and white uh, gesso comes in black white and clear so I'm just gonna use I have um, palette paper right here you know I use my palette paper it's like a waxy little up oh, and there's some uh, I left some Mod Podge on there 
just a waxy palette that I use to um, put my paints out on when I'm doing decorative painting but I'm just using it for um, to put my all my all my different mediums on so we're gonna but we're using a you can use a brush if you don't but my and look how dirty it is I hope it's all right but this is a brayer and I'm gonna do them both at the same time so we won't have to mess with gesso again and I'm just rolling it out on my uh, and I'm just gonna gently tone this down tone this collage work that we did down we're not trying to get rid of it but we just want it to peek through and listen this is what confused me about mixed media in the beginning I love the way that looks and especially when you do collage with color it's so awesome um, but it's just part of building the piece in mixed media it's like doing this is your background that's all this is this isn't your final um, focal point so you have to keep that in mind and don't get don't fall in love with every step you know enjoy the process that's what I'm trying to get my my viewers to realize because that's what matters to me is making sure that I'm having fun in the moment enjoying the process so I might have put too much on that and you know what you can do you can always take a baby wipe and wipe it back if you feel like you got a little crazy which is what I do I'm a heavy hand I say it every video pretty much and that just means that when I'm doing something I'm not gentle or um, sparing <laughs> I go in full force usually so uh, I tend to have a lot of whatever it is I'm doing so I like that I'm not gonna do much more than that but you can still see And, and actually when it dries it'll even um, be a little more uh, translucent I'm just gonna wipe off my brayer a little bit because this is why I have my brayer looks the way it does because I don't wipe it off I could probably just um, squirt some water out I think I lost it on this one. This one looks good. I'm just going to let that dry. Actually, might as well speed it up a little bit. But the brayer makes texture. I don't know if you can see it. But it almost looks like a dendritic a like little effect. Right here. See that? I'll go off camera and dry these okay next step I'm gonna add some color and I have some printer paper here a piece of deli paper this is a scrap of watercolor or mixed media paper and I'm just leaving those around to wipe off my brayer on so maybe we'll get some good looking um, prints on here as well and the first thing we want to do is I start dark to light I don't know if oops <laughs> that squirted I don't know if that's the rule or not and I tend to break rules so you know it's whatever you want to do but I, I, sh I could find that out like if that's actually a rule but it makes sense to me that you would start dark but I don't know maybe it's better to start light so I put it out in kind of a line and then I'm gonna just roll my brayer and try to have a light touch which is hard for me and just add this is actually called this is a Martha Stewart paint 
and it's a pearlescent paint. It is so gorge. Wow. I love this. Like what happened there? I don't know. Like I don't know if I should keep going. Sometimes you have to know when enough is enough. So I think I'm going to make a pass going the opposite direction. And as a rule, you don't want to do diagonal. You want to just go up and down and vertical and horizontal. But again, rules are meant to be broken. No. <laughs> Follow the rules, but, you know, we can take creative license, right? I love that. Because I don't want to cover up all the stuff that's going on in the background. So now for this next couple colors, I don't want to go too heavy. We have to try and keep it light up. Oh, you know what? I just wiped off my brayer when I was supposed to. Here, there's paint on here, so I'll put it on. There we go, Sarah. All right, now I can wipe it off. And I'm going to go into this teal. This is called Bahama Blue. And this is not a, um, I might want to let that dry a little bit. Because I have some kind of thick places. Actually, they look thick, but they might not be. It might just be because of the um, collage work underneath. Like that just maybe it caught the, the edge of a paper. I think that's what it is. It looks cool. I've never done this technique on top of collage. So that looks super cool. All right, so I'm just going to put this out on the other side of my palette. And this is not a pearlescent. It's just a, a flat paint. I can see it. It catches in certain places, right? But it's not catching in some of the other places. That might be an issue. I don't know. <laughs> see, this is why it's so fun for me because I'm not um, a master of it. And I love coming back to things and playing again and figuring it out a little bit more each time. Like, see that? I'm not getting... The low parts. I'm going to hit this deli paper and use up this paint on these pieces. And then when you're collaging next time or making inchies, sometimes you get a really cool piece of paper that you can use. So now I'm going to put that this is called citron green and I might I don't know I guess I'm gonna stick with the brayer but I'm like thinking it's not really going down in the areas that oh you know what we'll do when we do stenciling that's how we're gonna do it because when we stencil we're gonna stencil the next step and we're gonna use the same colors and kind of fill in the places that we didn't get but Mind you, we want to make sure we don't lose. See, like, I did lose a lot of that dark blue because the brayer just picks up the same areas. So I've never um, done this brayer technique on collage before. But I like this color combo a lot. I don't know if we're going to need the yellow.
I, th I feel like I want to go back with the dark blue. But maybe we'll just do that with our um, stencils. I don't want to overdo, so I'm going to... Let me see if I have a ponytail holder because I'm getting hot. <laughs> it's hot out today. Let me see. Like yesterday, I got so sick yesterday. Ugh, I was hurling my guts up. All right, so it is, oh, 90. 90 and sunny in May's Landing today. So I decided to have a craft day in the nice, cool, air-conditioned house because we were out by the pool, and I ate something that did not agree with me. But I love the way the brayer... I don't know if the color is coming through on the camera the way it is here, but it looks gorge. All right, I'm just going to give it a dry. Remember, we're cutting this up, so we're not working on it as if it was a, a finished piece. So maybe in the, if it were just a piece that we were going to put in a, an art journal, if it was an art journal page, you would work on the edges, maybe bring in some um, design there, maybe a little bit in the middle, but then your focal point would want to be in the middle. But for this, we want to put um, marks everywhere because we're going to cut it apart and so there'll be a little bit of everything um, in the background as well. So I have a few stencils, just a few, and I tried to pick small patterns because they're going to be inches, right? So I love, look at this, this thing. I could probably peel this paint off of here. I think this is a Diane Reevely circle st uh, stencil. And look, it doesn't even look circle-y because the paint has clogged it up so much. But I think I'm going to do my circles of dark blue. So I'm going to put out the dark blue and I have, um, I get these at the dollar store. They're the little makeup sponge applicators, makeup applicators. And I just use that. And you really want to um, stamp it off as best you can. Let's see. I want to put it in places down where it didn't reach before, right? So You know what though, like this right here, you can see all three colors and it looks really cool. Well, I can. I'm gonna just do it. I'm just gonna go for it and put, you wanna stamp it off a little bit. Make sure there's not too much paint on your sponge so that you get clean stenciling. And this is not an opaque color. It's more translucent, so I'm curious to see what that effect will look like. I think I'm just gonna go all over it with this because, like I said, this is getting cut apart. And that is not gonna be dark. But I like it. I think this Bahama Blue is gonna end up being our um, dominant color because it's, op it's opaque. I'll just use a smaller stencil for that. I don't think it's gonna be too much. We'll see, right? We, we shall see. I'm kind of betting on the fact that because it's inches, it'll be fine because we're cutting this apart. I keep repeating that, but I'm kind of talking to myself and thinking it's busy as heck, but I think we're cutting it so it's all good. And see, I had a lot more paint on it that time, but I love it. I love the shininess. 
All right. So now I'm going to go, I never wipe off my stencils as you can see. Um, I'm going to go with this one. I just got this one and I loved it because it has small little X's. It's a folk art. It was probably like two bucks. It was cheap. Two or three bucks. I might have overdone it. So maybe I will try and be hit and miss with this one. And I'm going to get a different sponge. Maybe I should have let them dry. I don't know. busy, isn't it? Looks okay, though. I'm going to go in places I haven't, there's definite white that I can see white shining through. See it, you can see it all along the edge there. There's some white. I'll do it, I'll keep going. And we can always tone it down with more gesso. I don't think I'm going to do any stamping in black. You know what? We could just do some. Um, stenciling in white, that'll tone it down instead of um, gesso. Because I'm going to do my focal images. I have some small stamps that I'm going to use to make the focal images on, the, on each inchy. Sometimes when you wipe off your stencils, you can rip up, like rip them or bend them and stuff because the way they're cut, this one's a pretty good one. This one's not going to do that, but I'm so rough that I bend my stencil. My butt wipes are kind of not as wet as they're at the end of the batch. And then for the green, I'm going to do these triangles. I think it's looking so messy though. I hope it looks good at the end. We'll see. And I think I have enough green. There's a lot of green on there already. You know, I think the green is the most um, vivid color. So I'm not sure I want to do any green. I think I'm going to do some white. Maybe we'll do some white letters. See how that turns out. Um, you know, just winging it. Now white's a neutral. White, black, and gray are neutral. So you can add white, black, and gray to any color scheme um, that you want. I'm going to do the whole thing, I think, because 
why guys we're cutting it apart <laughs> like it, it could be overwhelming if it was just going to be a, a page I'd probably hit and miss and only put some at the edges or something but we are cutting it apart and I think it would be cool to see a little letter on each inchy or a lot of inches. Oh, my arm feels like a workout because I'm so hard. All right, let's hope for the best. Ready? I can see it. It looks a little messy, but it's there. picking up the blue. My sponge got dirty. Or it's probably, maybe it's even from the stencil. Because we know I don't clean my stencils. I think it's good to have um, stencils with small patterns in your stash and I never thought of it that way before but it's good because you know you just want a little image sometimes or a little design that looks cool I think we're going to find that we're going to have some cool inches. I'm going to do a few triangles too in white. Where didn't I put it? Up here. So I'll do this corner with a few triangles. I believe this is a Diane Reevely as well. Dilusions stencil. She has big ones and little ones, and I think Michael's has a lot more of the big ones. That looks cool. All right, now, the last thing we can do is some stamping. So let me see what color stamp pads I have. I have this green. I have, I have, oh, I have the teal. Well, this is teal blue. It's a little different. I think it's going to be a little different. I have azure blue, which I think would definitely, and I have yellow. I think those three should do it. And I'm just going to pull some of my go-tos. I love my hearts. I love my script. Where's my script? I have circles. I love, that's actually Diane's. This is, I have the numbers, maybe I'll do numbers, and where's my script? This was a Michael stamp that was in, on an end cap in a seasonal, uh, just use what you have. And let's see what this does. I think I'm going to do the Azure with the um, script. Mmm, stays on. I love the smell of stays on. So let's see. There's so much shine going on. Hey, Kiwi. You want oh, hello. Kiwi just jumped on my shoulder. I love it. And I don't care if it's upside down or right way up but I'm not um, going diagonal I'm only keeping it and I don't know why I told you that's a rule of thumb and I love it I love script so much and I'm not I forget to but I could be stamping this on my random papers too and I didn't do any stenciling, but I covered that pretty much with that. 
Let's do something. What should we do with this? I've got the X's with that. Let's do the hearts. Let's see what they're... What are you doing, Kiwi, huh? Sticky. Alright, and then the green. Let's see. I want to check that because I remember it coming out a little bit of a different color. I forget what I was doing. Some type. I'm going to do the numbers with this. No, that's green. I like it. Where isn't there any green? Right here. Up here. There's pretty much green everywhere, right? I can't wait to cut it apart and see what we got. It's a lot, right? It's a lot. But I'm going to hope for the best. Let me get this on my papers. And what else could we do? We could spatter. I think I want to spatter with white. So let me do some spatter. I don't want to get the spatter on my shirt, Kiwi. What should I do? I like to spatter with a fan brush. And I just get it wet. And... I like biggish dots. They're good. Actually, I mean, they might melt. They actually melt sometimes. Like, it seems like they melt away. But I can see them. And I think I'm going to spatter with black, too. So, because I'm going to do, I'll probably do the edges with black. So I think I'll spatter with black. Just a little. Same brush. Just rinse it off. I broke it. The brush broke, so I have duct tape on it. This is like a hard bristle brush. That's really wet. I wonder if that's going to... Um, because they make soft bristles and... Just hitting my residual paper. That's a lot, guys. It's a lot. All right, I'm going to set that aside and let it dry, and we're going to do the same thing with reds. So I'm going to, I'm going to use, oh look, 
That's cool. Like, I could get something out of that. I could do more to it. I'm going to use... Hey, Kiwi, you're such a good girl. I definitely want to use a metallic, so let me... I'll be right back. Kiwi, you want to get to say hi? No, she doesn't. Red, magenta, orange, and yellow I picked. And this red is a pearl paint called Hollyberry. And I'm hoping it's nice and dark. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I remember um, jelly print, doing my jelly print with it. See how it just catches on the papers that we um, collaged on there? That is so cool. Very, very happy about that. I'm covering up too much. Look, I covered up a ton, but it looks really good. I like it. Isn't that a pretty color? And it's pearlescent. Look at that. Because my brayer's dirty, <laughs> I think it did that. Give me another piece of deli paper. Oops. So pretty. Is that pretty, Kiwi? Do you like that color? I like it. Alright, I got a little carried away, but I think it's good. Um, fuchsia. Try to go a little lighter. Maybe I will clean the briar. I'm going to try and just go gently where the red is and pick up where it's not yet. So we'll see how it goes. It's hard for me to be gentle. I'm covering up a lot of that collage. I'm stopping. Now we're going to do orange. Oh, I forgot to put it on there. Too many crickets, Sarah. Magenta. And we'll see if I do yellow. Maybe three colors is enough. It might be time for a snack. I've been trying to be gentle with my belly today. I'm going to have an apple. That looks so cool. I really like that. I think I want to add a little orange over here. This is pumpkin. But again, guys, use what you have. I have pumpkin. That's why I'm using it. I might put a tad of yellow. That looks so cool. All right, <laughs> get a little excited. We're in the home stretch. We're gonna be cutting soon. Cutting our pieces apart. Not really in the home stretch yet. This is gonna end up being another long video. Gonna do a little bit of yellow and hope for the best. Oh man, I really like this though. Ugh, I can't, ugh. Let me put it down on here and see. I'll, put, I'll do it on here first. 
so I don't ruin it. I think it looks gorgeous. Wow. So do you think doing the dark first and working our way to light is the way to go? OMG. That looks so cool. I love it. The yellow really made it pop. All right. Now, I'm going to go gentle with my red this time. Now, maybe I'll do so. I won't do dots. The dots are very prominent. I'm going to do red. Which stencil do I want to do? Uh... I think I'll do the letters with the red. I do have a lot of red though. I think pink. So you can only see a little bit of pink. I think I'll do pink polka dots. Let's do pink dots, but I should probably be doing red first. I'll do red letters. Just hit and miss. Uh, red. I have a red. No, those are my blues. Okay, I did it too heavy. That looks smudgy. Oh, I love it. This one's turning out so cool. Hi, Kiwi. What are you doing? Do you want to do this too? Do you want to play? I do dots with the pink, which is called Royal Fuchsia. Can't find it. How do I, you know, oh, right here. Thank you. I knew it was right there. So let's go into these, like, Places that there's white. Try and pump up the pink over there. Did it work? Seems like I'm just missing where I want to hit. There we go.
I'm going to have such a muscle when I'm done this. Love it. I need more paint. That one's a good one because I definitely hit it in white spots. And up in this area. Well, that was a blob. Um, I don't know if we're going to be able to see the orange. Probably. And it's looking really, really good. But I think I'm going to do, because we're going to do a little bit of stamping. I only had red and pink. I don't have an orange. I th oh, yes, I do. I have an orange, so maybe we'll do orange stamping. All right, you know what, why not do, I wanna do those X's. I'll do some orange X's because I just think there's a lot going on, but we gotta, I should have one more. I filled in all the white spaces. I can see them. I can definitely see them. And I think what's going to be cool is when we cut it apart, it may really stand out then. You know? That's what I'm hoping. A little bit in here. And then I'm going to stamp, and then we're cutting. I'm impatient. I want to see what we got from all our hard work because my muscle hurts. All right, Kiwi, what do you think? Do you think it's going to be good? Stamping. We're going to stamp with red and make some red hearts. Actually, I'm going to do the words. I'm going to do the script with the red because it's the darkest. can't really see it. A yeah, tiny bit. Maybe my reds, no, I can see it. My red might be not as juicy. My red's getting a little old. Can't really see that at all. Barely. I don't think it's juicy enough. Um, we have lots of polka dots. I'm going to try the orange with, well, I didn't get out any other stamps. Let's try the letters. I'm sorry, these are numbers. I don't think they're going to show up. I think I'm good. See, there's a little writing. And you know what? You'll be able to see that when it's um, cut up.
Nothing but blue skies. See when you do it softer, you get a whole nother look. And you can see the script. Okay. So I think I have to call this done and it's crazy busy. I hope it's not too much. But let's do a little bit of white um, spatter. I'll go off camera and I'll spatter white and I'll do a little bit of white stenciling and then it's gonna be time to cut. Be right back. Okay, I am gonna do, <clears throat> everything's dry. I'm gonna cut a strip of two inch and one inch from both of these and maybe make a book of each. I'll show you what I mean. We'll see. I'm going to go and do a two inch and a one inch. So this is going to be my inches on this one. Whoops, that didn't cut all the way. Two, three. I'm just gonna make a bunch, and I'll pick the ones I like the best. I think my um my blade is getting a little dull because I'm cutting through all that uh, Mod Podge and collage. So this one's a little small. And then <clears throat> I'm going to do these. We'll, we'll end up being the background for these. You'll see. So two inch. I need probably four of these. Well, yeah, four of them. Really, oh, look at that. Is that one inch? Yep. Oh, I like this one. I kind of like this side. Look at that one. I like it. And, all right. So, do the same thing with this guy. I love this one. This one turned, because I have more white left on this one. I don't know, I just like it better. So that's my book, and then these are going to be the inches. For some reason on the blue one, you can see all the different stuff we did. I see, oh man, I see so much good stuff on these. I love these blue ones. <clears throat> so let me come in. I'm going to grab a piece of paper just so it looks nicer. And I'll zoom in. So if I'm using these as my background, or my covers, you know, this would be the inchy. See how it stands out? Because it's opposite, right? Complementary colors, right? And then you do the same thing. with the blue
and then use these as the inchies. I love that one. Or this one. So that way they're complementary, right? So you can see them. Um, these are super cool. So now, and then we have to make a cover. The thing is, the middle page needs to be, they all need to be double sided. I didn't consider that. So I'm going to cut the, I'll cut another row of two. Yeah. And I'll glue them together. And then we have to create our inchies. So I need to create, um, I'll show you. So we have to, the, this, I really love the blue. I think the blue turned out super pretty. Really, really pretty. I love, look at that. I don't know if you guys can see it on camera the way I do. But you can see all the different stuff that we did. And on the red, it seems a little more mottled, muddy. I don't know if that's the right word. So we want to go like this. Well, I got to cut this too. What the heck? I'm going to do this side. I think my blade's getting dull. Twinchies look really nice in the red. So here's what I'm talking about. See on the red, oh, let me move them and go on here. This is all defined. You can see the brayer marks, the um, collage. On this it's kind of a lot more covered up and muddy. It's just a lot more, but this you can see different things. Maybe it's the stamping. This one just has the white stenciling on top, which I do like. I think it gives you something to look at. But I just love the blue. The blue is my fave. This one's nice. This might be my cover or something. I'll pick a good one for the cover. But I really like the blue. I like that you can differentiate. There are some of them, um, the collage showing through on this one for sure. I see words, the lot, the striped paper that I used, um, some music notes over there. So I really like that. I like to be able to see it. So just going lighter with the paint is probably the trick to it. But this, since this was my second, I start to get heavier and heavier and heavier. So I'm going to go ahead and make my covers, and then we'll work on some inchies. Because I'm going to add some details to these and finish them up. OMG, they're so pretty though. The colors are, wow, I'm excited. All right, so I'll glue my pages together. And you don't need to watch me do that. I'm just going to glue back to back so that there's front and backs to everything. Oops, and I might as well get up so that I don't blind you guys. All right, so I'll be right back. All right, I, it was hard, but I've narrowed it down to these inchies. I got my books made, so they're three pages. I love them. I think they turned out so well. When you cut them down into little pieces, look at the difference it makes. Even these crowded ones, I mean, you can see enough stuff on there. Maybe I'll flip that one. 
and then I just have to figure out what which inches I'm going to do and I'm going to come back with a part two so uh, because this one was just creating our backgrounds and then we're going to focus in on actually uh, creating our focal points we're going to do the covers and four inches probably just for one of these sets all right so thanks for watching you guys